In this section, we'll be examining a process which is effectively the inverse of multiplication. It is the process by which we, we are actually going to, to take a multiplied form and write it as the product of factors. And the process generally is called factoring. Now, in the past, we have taken a, a situation like this and multiplied 2 times x plus 3 to get 2x plus 6. And we're using the distributive property to do that. Well, the, the idea in factoring is to perform this operation sort of backwards, is to take 2x plus 6 and write it as 2 times x plus 3. Now, factoring takes a number of different forms, and this form of factoring is called taking out a common monomial factor. That is, we recognize that 2 is a factor in this term, and 2 is a factor in this term. That is, 6 is 2 times 3. So we can snag that 2 out of the 2x, leaving x, snag the 2 out of the 6, leaving a 3. And we have our factored form. One really nice thing about factoring is that we can always check it. That is, if, we're, if we go from here and we factor into this form, then we can check the factored form by verifying that if we multiplied this out, we would get what we started with, you see. Well, let's go through the, this common monomial factor idea. When faced with a polynomial like this, looks a little more complicated, you, you want to look at the numbers and the letters uh, almost separately. You want the largest common factor, or the largest factor that is common to 6, 30, and 12. Well, let's see. What's the largest number that goes into those three? Oh, it's 6. So 6 is the largest numerical factor. Now, what about for the variables? Well, we have five factors of x here. We have four factors of x here. We have three factors of x here. Common to all of those terms would be three factors of x. So we have 6x cubed that we're going to snag out of each of these terms. And I think that's, the, that's a good way to look at it. We're just kind of pulling them out, and we're going to write down what's left, you see, to give us the factored form. All right, when we pull 6 out of 6, we have no numbers left, an understood one, perhaps, we can think of, but that's all. And then when we pull x cubed out of x to the fifth, we're left with x squared. Pull 6 out of 30, we're left with 5. Pull x cubed out of x to the fourth, and we're left with x. Pull 6 as a factor out of 12, and we're left with 2. Pull x cubed out of x cubed, leaving no x factors. So here is our factored form. In this one, let's see, numbers and letters. For the numerical part, out of 3, 12, and 18, 3 is the largest common factor. There are no letters that are common to all three terms. This term doesn't contain a letter, you see. So there's no common literal factor. We can pull 3 out of all three terms like this. Pull 3 out of this term, and we're left with minus x squared. Pull 3 out of this term, 3 out of 12, you see, leaves 4. So this will leave 4x for the term. Pull 3 out of the negative 18, we're left with negative 6. And once again, if we want to verify this as a correct factored form, we could just multiply 3 times this polynomial to ver verify that we get this. Now, there is another way to, to factor this polynomial. And <clears throat> it is a way where we snag out negative 3 instead of 3. And in some circumstances, taking out a negative factor is more valuable to us than taking out a positive factor. Uh, and here, if we take out negative 3, here's what happens. And it's pretty easy to see that when we take negative 3 as a factor out of this term, we're left with x squared. When we pull negative 3 as a factor out of this term, you might say, well, gee, there's no negative 3 in there. There's no negative in there. It's positive 12. Well, just think about what we would need to multiply against here in order to get that. that that's a way of identifying a correct factored form. Now, another way to think about it is like this. When you pull 3 out of 12, you know you get 4. And when you factor a negative out of terms, all it does is change the signs. So this is going to be minus 4x. And when you pull negative 3 out of negative 18, you pull the negative out, you get a positive. That is, it changes the sign. And 3 out of 18 leaves 6. Now, just notice the difference in these two factored forms. When you, you pull a, a negative rather than a positive out of, as a common factor, out of a polynomial, all that happens is, the only difference is that you have a sign change for every term. All right, here's another situation. Now, in this uh, expression, we only have two terms. We have this term and this term. 
And in this problem, the y minus 3 is playing the role of a single letter. That is, if this were a single entity, we would understand that we could pull that single entity out as a common factor. And we can pull y minus 3 then out of these two terms. When we pull y minus 3 out of this term, we're left with 2y. When we pull the y minus 3 out of this term, we're left with plus 5. So here is the correct factored form. So binomials can play the same role as single letters in some circumstances. Here we have four terms to be factored. We would look for a common monomial factor first, and we don't see one. That is, here we have a 1, and so there are no numbers that are common uh, as factors in all of these. And we have a cubed, a squared, and a, but no a over here. So there are no a factors that are common to all four. The technique for factoring when we are faced with four terms is a technique called factoring by grouping. And we accomplish that by thinking of these two in a group and those two in a group. Take the common factor out of these two. Well, let's see, I see a squared. You see, a squared is common to both of those. So I'll snag a squared out of these two terms. When I pull a squared out of a cubed, I'm left with a. When I pull a squared out of this term, I'm left with negative 5. Then I turn my attention over here. The common factor for these two terms is 6. So I'm going to pull 6 out of those two terms. 6 out of 6a leaves a. 6 out of minus 30 leaves minus 5. And now I have a situation like we had just a moment ago. I have a, a common binomial factor, which I can pull out of these two terms. So I, I think about taking out a minus 5. Take a minus 5 out of this term, I'm left with a squared. Take a minus 5 out of this term, I'm left with 6, a factored form. Let's go through the process again on this one. Let's see. Factoring by grouping, I'm thinking of these two in a group. And let's see, for 4 and 2, 2 is a common factor. For x to the fourth x cubed, x cubed is a common factor. So I'm pulling 2x cubed out of these two terms. When I pull 2 out of the 4, I'm left with a 2. When I pull x cubed out of x to the fourth, I'm left with a factor of x. All right, when I pull the 2 out of the 2, no numbers, no, there's no numerical part left. When I pull a cubed out of a cubed, hmm, no literal part either. Now notice that all that's here is 2x cubed, and I'm pulling 2x cubed out. So it's like I'm pulling everything out of that term. But I need something here. I need to write something here. And it turns out what I need to write is 1. Because after all, I need to make sure that what I have here multiplies back to get that. So if for no other reason, I need to put a 1 here as something to multiply against. All right, over here, common factor, oh, it's only 3. So I have plus 3 times, now 3 out of this leaves minus 2x, 3 out of 3. Well, when I pull the 3 out, you see I pull everything out, I'm left with a 1. Now let's look at these two terms. Can I pull out a common binomial factor? Well, not exactly. I have 2x minus 1 here, but minus 2x plus 1 here. If I could just get one of those binomials to change signs, I would be able to factor further. Well, I can do that by simply doing this. I can say, well, instead of taking plus 3 out of, out of this binomial, I'll take negative 3 out. When I take out minus 3, let me just start from the get-go here. <clears throat> take out minus 3, the signs are going to change. I'll get the same two terms I had before, but with the signs different. Negative 3 out of this leaves 2x. Negative 3 out of this, you see, it's kind of like we're forcing the factorization of the negative 3. We're kind of thinking, what do we need to multiply times to give the 3? Negative 3 times what is plus 3? Well, gee, negative 1. OK, that's a way to look at it. Now, in these two terms, the binomial factor is the same. So I'll take out the 2x minus 1 as a common factor. When I take 2x minus 1 out of this term, I'm left with 2x cubed. When I take 2x minus 1 out of this term, I'm left with a negative 2. There is a factor of x. When we multiply the standard function function with this equation that we had just a little bit ago in class 7, we we got the difference of squares. So it must be